Hello and welcome back. This is Renier Torenbeek with part 2 of the presentation about benchmarking DDS. In the previous part I have given an introduction on DDS benchmarking. In this part I will talk about a freely available open source DDS benchmarking suite called DDS Touchstone. Before going into details about DDS Touchstone, a few words about its purpose and goals so you know what to expect. DDS is frequently used in large-scale networked environments, so DDS Touchstone should be able to simulate those even on smaller scale networks. The suite should be agnostic to network size, so you're not bothered with any reconfiguration when switching to a different network. Also, the Touchstone suite should support different operating systems, like Linux, Windows, Solaris, but also real-time operating systems. This includes doing tests with operating system hybrid networks. Touchstone supports different application languages, currently C, C++ and Java, as well as language hybrid networks. In order to be able to do trade studies, Touchstone supports different DDS vendors, and our current goal is to support any DDS vendor out there. In the near future it should also include DDS vendor hybrid networks, and this should be possible with the emergence of the DDSi wire protocol. Touchstone should be able to, use to support different application domains, so for that reason it is scenario driven and it allows for flexible deployment. Currently Touchstone supports DCPS only, not DLRL, and the good news is it is fully open source and available via SourceForge. I will now explain how we achieved all those goals with this single benchmarking suite. The cornerstone of this suite is one generic DDS application called Touchstone. This application is capable of doing every test that we spoke about in part 1. That means latency and determinism, throughput and efficiency, and discovery, and any combination of these. Touchstone itself is available in C, C++ and Java, and you can have multiple instances running on multiple machines. Furthermore, it's configured with two parameters only, which makes it easy to deploy, and these two parameters are the application ID for identification of the Touchstone, and an optional group ID for identification of the group the Touchstone belongs to. A group can be used for sending multicast-like commands to a, command, to a, to a Touchstone application. The interfacing to Touchstone is done by means of DDS topics. That means input settings and output results are both done via the regular DDS mechanism of publishing and subscribing to samples. This assures location, platform and language independence of deployment. The Touchstone application is the container for the four key players, which you will see on the next slide. These four key players are called transceiver, transponder, transmitter and receiver. Transceivers and transponders appear in pairs. They have a kind of ping-pong communication, which makes it possible for them to measure latency and jitter. Transmitters and receivers also appear in pairs and are responsible for measuring throughput and efficiency. The transmitter-receiver pairs are also used for determining discovery times. Any number of pairs can be running simultaneously, and it's a scenario that describes which transceivers, transponders, transmitters and receivers have to be created in which Touchstone application. This way it is easy to create any scenario that you would want to do. Each of the four entities has its own unique properties, but they also have quite a lot of things in common. First of all, they are all dynamically created and destructed by their container touchstone application. This happens whenever a corresponding definition topic sample is received. The creation happens using the QoS settings as defined in a corresponding QoS topic sample and with the proper thread scheduling class and priority as defined in the definition topic sample. Furthermore, once created, they can be dynamically adjusted by their container touchstone application whenever an updating corresponding definition topic or QS topic sample is received. So the interfacing to Touchstone is done completely by using regular DDS mechanisms of publishing and subscribing 
to definition topics and QoS topics. Also, every entity is attached to exactly one DDS partition and it operates on exactly one DDS topic. Measurements and observations done by every entity are published into DDS using a corresponding report topic. This publishing is done with configurable frequencies. Let's take a closer look at the specific entities. Starting with the transceiver, which does the latency and determinism measurements. It is created whenever a touchstone application receives a transceiver definition topic sample, and it internally consists of a data writer and a data reader. It uses the QS settings as defined in the corresponding transceiver QS topic sample, and it measures write times and round trip times. The tables below show a, a snapshot of our DDS tuner tool that illustrates what the different topics look like. The transponder is the counterpart of the transceiver, which is also responsible for latency and determinism measurements, and it's created whenever a touchstone application receives a transponder definition topic sample. Internally, it consists of a data writer and a data reader, and it uses the QS settings as defined in the corresponding transponder QS topic sample. Again, the tuner snapshot shows what the different topics look like. The transmitter does throughput and efficiency measurements and is created whenever a touchstone application receives a transmitter def topic sample. The transmitter internally consists of a data writer only, sending out samples at a regular pace. It uses the QS settings as defined in the corresponding transmitter QS topic sample. Its counterpart, the receiver, receives the samples and measures the number of samples per second. It is created whenever a touchstone application receives a receiver def topic sample and it internally consists of a data reader only. The QS settings as defined in the cure corresponding receiver QS topic sample are used when creating the receiver data reader. The transmitter receiver pairs are also responsible for doing discovery latency measurements. If a receiver is created and its corresponding transmitter is already up and running, then it will measure how long it did, how long it took before it received its first data. This measurement also depends on the transmitter write frequency. If a receiver is already up and running and a transmitter is created, then the receiver will notify what the timestamp of the first data received was. That way, data writer discovery latency is measured. Lost samples are detected by means of sequence numbering. Now that we know about all the details of each entity, it is quite easy to understand that a scenario is actually defined by the set of DEF topic and QS topic samples that were issued. So recreating a scenario is done by republishing those topics in the same order and with the same timing as the original publication. Such a scenario can be manually created using either vendor-specific tooling, like the Open Splice Tuner, which is capable of inserting samples into the middleware dynamically, or by means of a plain text scenario file, which describes the different dev topic and QS topic samples. Replaying can be done by means of the DDS Touchstone Recorder tool. Since we are reusing all DDS ma mechanisms, we get uh, platform, location and language independence for free. Controlling the recorder tool by means of the OpenSplice DDS Tuner looks like this. It's a convenient way of starting and stopping the recorder and replaying it. To stay completely vendor independent, you can use the text scenario file, which is shown here. The file contains all the details about the topics that have to be issued. Finally, a few words about reporting. The entities that are created by Touchstone will be reporting their results via DDS using report topics. Reusing this DDS mechanism again assures location, platform and language independence, and it also allows for easy creation of reporting tools. The built-in DDS Touchstone tools Watcher and Spotter generate some simple output for this. Please tune in to part 3 for the remainder of this presentation.